So, uh, live life fully. It's colorful. There you go. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Take talk. Let's talk. This is the Mitten Shah Show. We've asked the same seven questions to entrepreneurs from all over the world to figure out what makes us tick. Take talk. Let's talk. Uh, welcome back, everybody. Today we're here with Jay. Uh, Jay, if you can tell us about yourself and what your company does, if you explain it to a seven-year-old. Hi, Mitin. Thank you for having me. My name is Jayantra. You can call me Jay. Uh, so our company name is Angler Technologies, and uh, what we do is uh, we are a reliable software development company for product development companies around the world. So they basically come to us when they have a need for technology resources or uh, upskilling for specific reasons. Okay. Awesome. Um, what got you started on this? So uh, I had uh, finished my uh, Bachelor of Engineering in one of the top five universities in India and all my friends were going to do their masters abroad, mm -hmm. specifically to the US. So that was one route to take. The other route was I felt, you know, why do I have to go work for a multinational company? Why can't I do something from India and build something world class from India itself? Uh, so that's what got me started. And uh, you know, it's 18 years now and we are around 200 people building um, software products for companies around the world. So that's where we started. <laughs> wow, so you started with just one and now 18 years later you're 200. Yes, yes. Oh, that's quite a story. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Yes. Uh, yeah. um, now, during that journey there must have been quite a few things that didn't let you sleep at night. And on the contrary, there must have been quite a few things that, you know, you got up before the alarm clock rang. Definitely. So what are those? I think, uh, I think great question, Mithin. I think, uh, I think for any entrepreneur, I think, uh, those are vital ingredients, I would yeah. say. <laughs> we would like not to have the first one, but it invariably creeps up. And the second one is why we are an entrepreneur, right? So let me answer the one that keeps me up at night. I think that has changed over a period of time. When I started the journey, uh, my nature was getting into the business. By, I was projecting myself into the business. <laughs> for example, I'm a perfectionist by nature. So I want everything to be right for the customer, right for the staff, right for the employees. That ended up me working too much in the business. I was projecting myself onto everybody. And I think that was a big learning uh, because it was stressing myself out and stressing my employees out as well. Mm -hmm. So I'll be thinking, hey, that uh, comma full stop is missing, this email is not having this language, whatever. So I think I became more process oriented as a result of this and uh, I got married. So two things happened <laughs> that made me sleep better at night. Uh, in a jovial sense. <laughs> so, um, so I think I was more balanced from a personal life and I got more to work on the business from a professional point of view. So that really helped me to uh, not uh, be projecting myself onto others but instead work towards helping them to be more successful. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I'm sleeping very well now uh, compared to earlier. And what keeps me up is uh, we've now kind of taken up uh, our scaling up journey. I think we've kind of reinvented our company three times in the last 18 years being in uh, technology business. We almost had to um, kind of demolish our earlier business models and reinvent ourselves to, to be relevant in the business. So now we have taken up this journey called uh, Scaling Up um, based on the book of Vern Harnish. He's the founder of EO. And um, uh, my forum and myself did a, a workshop with him. And uh, all of us have taken different uh, pillars of scaling up. And right now I'm working on the core, which is the core values, the purpose, why are we as a company existing? And that is what is making me get up every day in the morning and figure out how do we bring our core values to life? How do we bring the core purpose of a company uh, so that each of our employees can have a more fulfilling role at work? Oh, okay. That's, that's what is going on right now. Yeah, yeah that's, that's nice. <laughs> uh, that's right now, but you know a lot right now that you wish you knew when you began. Right. Can you share some of those experiences? Well, I think, or some of those yeah, 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 amazing. I mean, for me, the first three, four years was like an expensive uh, MBA. Okay. Uh, instead of going to business school, I was, and, and spending the tuition fees, I was spending it on the business and making mistakes and learning. I think the fundamental was identifying who is my core customer. I think when you're a startup and you're an entrepreneur, you just want to get business, whatever, you know, whatever it is. Money is money, right? Yeah, <laughs> you, you want to pay the bills, you want to pay the salary, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so it ends up diluting your energy, diluting your focus, and then suddenly you're not very sure what your core competency is. So I think uh, figuring out who the target customer is and figuring out what you're really good at as a business, I think that took us some time and a lot of mistakes to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, I still think we are in this journey where we are still uh, figuring out who, who our ideal customer is because we've kind of pivoted from 
pure services business into more of a you pivoted three times three right? times so, right so i think yeah. consequently our target customers also keep uh, changing mm-hmm. but we are constantly trying to be true to our core purpose which is how do we make the customer focus on a core business and we take care of the software pain behind it yeah. that's been the core mm-hmm. but uh, the business models have changed yeah for who are you solving exactly. that problem that has changed very well said yes that has changed um what are some of the mistakes that you've made that others can learn from yeah i think one i shared is mm-hmm. i think uh, as an entrepreneur you end up uh, at least i ended up micromanaging a lot in the beginning and i think uh, employees don't like it uh, that's the it's a one so the solution path. is get married <laughs> well <laughs> i hope my wife doesn't see this uh, but i think uh, i i also think it's a, po- a part of how eo uh, brought value i i, okay. I, I know yeah. that's coming down the line in the interview mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. eo brought me a lot of clarity in uh, my blind spots mm-hmm. like the johari window so i think i was not having a check and a balance before the forum it was uh, me you know i took all the decisions and uh, the forum made me self reflect a lot more mm-hmm. introspect a lot more and that made me realize where i could be going wrong mm-hmm. uh, and one of the areas was clearly you know uh, being too much of a perfectionist in the business so now i've learned business is about progress and perfection is uh, uh, like not star you work towards it you don't kind of try to do it every day nice so that's one big mistake and the other one i would say is uh, um, somehow getting the employees more involved i think uh, more of top down approach was in the beginning years and now it's a little more of listening and coaching and less of telling them what to do i i think still work in progress to be honest but i think uh, we have a great set of uh, leaders in the business now and our employees have all become leaders in the business and i think you're getting there but i mean that is a progression that would happen when you have a team of let's say 5 to 10 people to a team of 100 people plus that right. the decision making avenues are going to change change yes yeah. yes no i agree yes i think uh, being conscious of it was i think a challenge mm-hmm. because you tend to manage the business the same way you managed when you were right. 20 people okay. and i think you kind of don't get it now you 100 people or 200 yeah. people yeah. and i think that took some, took me some time Yeah, yeah. um but i think the process based uh, approach really helped mm-hmm. you know being more system oriented process oriented structure oriented it empowers others and it uh, <coughs> you know keeps you also agile and flexible yeah absolutely um what are some of the points that you've been most proud happy satisfied and content with so i think uh, what we're really proud of is the fact that uh, we discovered our core values for the company along with the team of leaders in the business so we uh, we did a retreat exercise with uh, our employees and we went through a discovery process uh, we asked everyone to come up with stories of customer successes and what are the customers repeating uh, from these stories what is it the one or two things that they are all echoing about our company and from that we elucidated our core values and i think i was very proud of the fact that you now this is really the the dna of the company the soul of the company the behavior of the company and it's come out from our customer success stories rather than you know i wrote it down in a piece of paper and we you know kind of put it up there so that was an amazing exercise because it brought the whole team together they all believed in it and uh, i would say that is one big thing we're proud of the second thing is the fact that we have reinvented ourselves two three times and stayed uh, relevant in the business uh, we went from being a pure website company to now more of a product development company over the past 18 years so i think we've really really been agile in that in that progress so it's it's it's, it's the progression the the, the, the progression which Correct. is is really satisfying to you exactly yeah. the progression in terms of value addition right uh, rather than you know it's like commodity trading versus finished products mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so we were you know okay. earlier at low commodity and now mm-hmm. we are at uh, uh, like a retail of finished products right, right. but in software yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. sweet um if you had a billboard and you can put on any message that you wanted what would that message be very interesting we actually had a billboard in okay. the first 5 years <laughs> where we in the city in the, in the heart of the city which actually said uh, said city uh, of city of coimbatore which actually said jobs at angleritech.com that's okay. all nothing else okay just that's all because we really wanted to attract top talent yeah. uh but now i would think uh, we would just put a brand there i okay. uh, just put our company name angler and the second company i've started uh, with my brother called trinetra but as i think uh, what is trinetra mean uh, trinetra stands for um, uh, it's a it's a vehicle tracking software so it stands for hardware software and cloud what does it mean uh, the word trinetra means the third eye the third eye okay. third eye okay. yes yeah, yeah. so we help clients to to manage the fleets better okay right? yeah. the third eye on their fleet yeah. exactly yeah. so yeah. i think brand is becoming so much more important for us to um differentiate ourselves price ourselves better 
reach out to target customers better so i would rather put the brand of the company out oh, there yeah. Yeah. let the brand do the talk let the brand do the talk and we really work make sure the brand experience is wonderful oh, yeah you've got the values in place so exactly. the brand can do the talk exactly yeah. yes. how has eo made a difference in your personal family business or community life i think eo has touched all those categories in multiple ways i think uh, personally it's made me a better leader it's uh, helped me to listen more um, i think we actually have in our forum a listening champion it's a role i don't know if global actually follows that but in our forum we have a listening champion to make sure that giving full attention so it's automatically what does a listening champion do because we don't have one in our forum uh, yeah, yeah we didn't have one either yeah. so this uh, came up when we had a facilitator a regional mm-hmm. director of our south asia region he came along with us on a retreat mm. and we said we really wanted to take our uh, forum to the next level mm. and one of the things he identified with our forum was the fact that we are all so pumped up and we are together mm. and that we may not be listening to each other as much as we should be mm. uh, so we actually have a listening champion which is primary to make sure we giving the person full attention without being judgmental without doing problem solving mm-hmm. so yeah just, uh, just just a little bit of you know it's like a 5% thing you're already at 95% but you want to go to 100 then the listening champion helps okay so listening has improved on is he similar to that gestalt gestalt is more about speaking from experience right. but you can speak from experience only if you know what uh, is what if you can resonate with your forum buddy so right. to resonate with your forum buddy first you need to be listening, listening. 100% yeah. Okay. So otherwise you are already deciding oh I'm going to share this experience yeah. he's not even finished talking <laughs> you're already decided oh I'm going to share this experience yeah, then you stop listening yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I think that helped me personally yeah, yeah, yeah. because uh, for example with uh, my family members with my wife with my employees I was always going to be ready with answer hmm. before they finish hmm. talking hmm. now I'm like not deciding anything having an open mind just listening hmm. and I suddenly find that uh, the communication is much better because they can sense that you're listening hmm. Uh, hmm. Hmm. the next human being gets it he yeah. they yeah. get it that you're listening yeah. uh, so and those are one of the great uh, um, uh, elements of Nelson Mandela when people look at his le- leadership ca- capacities okay. that he was a great listener right right he was always the last to talk and, and all amazing that, but yeah yeah, yeah. I would say in community part I think it has really helped me to have friends all over India all over the world like I'm meeting with you mm. just mm-hmm. because of you. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I um, I met with uh, so many people today at uh, you know where we are in Macau mm. uh, with 1600 EO members and you end up having friends all over the world. Mm. Uh, mm. So I think community point of view it has helped in that regard. Um, yeah, so many takeaways from you. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> so many best practices. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Jay Thank you very much. Thank you Mitin. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Now now to some Lego. Okay.